God hates sin. God hates evil. How to stop sinning? Why is it that sin has contaminated all humanity? What is it that moves us to fall into the abyss, even knowing that we will perish? What is it that produces the taste of sin? The devil is our best friend because he is pleased to show us how good sin is. He shows it as indispensable for our lives, so necessary for us that we become addicted to it. Blinded with no desire to leave evil, he fills us with courage for self-justification. He entangles us with the secret of evil and reassures our consciences. Because of this friendship with the devil, we lose the friendship with Jesus, the friend who never fails. And sin produces a thirst that can never be quenched, a hunger that can never be satisfied, a fantasy that comes out of the lie of the devil. Sin is a very difficult flame to extinguish. Oh, if it were not because God loves us so much and has put the light of the conscience in every heart, the natural law, the guardian angel, that inner voice that speaks to us in the midst of our shame. If the devil tries to pervert us, God, through our conscience, tries to get us out of evil to return to good. God does not get tired. In fact, he's always knocking at the door. Apocalypse 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person, and they with me. But when we are in sin, we close the door. We lock, we lock it with many padlocks and chains. We get locked in with the devil in the dark. We become deaf to the voice of God and do not want the light he offers. So, what is it that we are doing in reality? When we sin, we sign a death contract with the devil. We deliver the soul in exchange for the pleasure he gives us. We become his children. We fall for his lies. We parade festively with him directly to hell. We drink deadly poison. We shoot ourselves in the heart. We say goodbye to heaven. Apart from this, we are turning our backs to God. We are despising the gift offered to us, offered us to be his children, and we insult God, crucifying his son Jesus. Is it really true that we stop being children of God and we become children of the devil when we live in sin? Yes, that's right. Unfortunately, the first letter of St. John, chapter 3, verse 8, tells us, The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And how does God feel about sin? Isaiah 59, verse 2, But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Sin is a wall that we build with the devil, which prevents God's light to shine in the soul. Proverbs 11, verse 20. The Lord detests those whose hearts are perverse, but he delights in those whose ways are blameless. God the Father is outraged for the sin of man, because in sin he sees his son Jesus crucified. Apocalypse 21, verse 8. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second day. Romans 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. God teaches us in Amos 5, verse 15, hate evil, love good. This is because God hates evil and loves good. On which side do we want to be? If we sin, we can only be with the devil. What is the actual meaning of sin? Sin is the excrement of Satan. That filthy muck from his wickedness, a succulent and delicious food of the sinner. 
Sin is a poison food that Satan gives to all those hungry for disobedience, those who in their pride defy the commandments and the will of God. Sin is the virus that silently pollutes the soul and leads it to death and eternal damnation. Sin is the currency of Satan that many anxiously seek. It is the weapon of the enemy that he uses to cause us mortal wounds. Sin is the sinner's clothing, makeup, camouflaging evil, display nervous aura of the evil one that deceives many naive souls. Sin is corruption, which perverts with deception, pleasures, riches, lies, hatred, and self-complacency. Sin is that cloud of comfort in which we live when the demon closes the eyes of the soul from the light of God. Sin is the shadow of the devil that amicably blankets anyone who moves away from God. It is the sale contract of our souls to the enemy. It is the title of possession that accredits the devil as our owner. Sin is the food of Eve, the sweet apple that in his bitterness has robbed us immortality and continues being poison and death for those who are disobedient. Sin is the darkness that Satan gives us to make us bog down in darkness and despise God's light. Sin is that attractive mask covering the face of death. Sin is that hideous monster that captivates us and deceives us with temporary satisfaction to the cost of eternal unhappiness. Sin are mortal darts that penetrate the soul, then pervert the spirit and lead it straight to damnation. Our sin is guilty of the death of Christ on the cross. Each one of us has personally crucified the Lord. Sin is a wound of the soul, a stain that cannot be removed, a record of our wrongdoing, the mark of the devil, the number 666. Sin damages our relationship with God. It destroys the sinner and those offended by it. The consequences of sin affect not only the victim, but many people around. So then, how is it that I have been seduced by Satan and I have accepted him as my father? Dear brother, sister, our misfortune is inherited. It is the sin of our first parents that still haunts the land. And only Jesus Christ can cleanse us with his precious blood. What must I do to leave sin? First of all, I must repent. I must ask God for forgiveness, for my conversion. I must consider the offense I have committed before God, the damage that I have personally done to myself, the damage that I have done to others, and the physical and spiritual consequences of my disobedience. I must feel disgust and repugnance for all kinds of sin, study their consequences, and flatly reject their influence. I must get away from the charms of sin, detest their fascination, and condemn their justifications. I must live alert to overcome temptations and avoid sin. Second of Peter chapter 2 verse 22, of them the Proverbs are true. A dog returns to his vomit, and a saw that is washed returns to her wallowing in the mud. If I ever sin, it's because I have not repented, period. I must confess at the first opportunity after I have committed sin. I must confess not only my sin, but my guilt and the consequences of sin. I must promise God never to offend him again. I must overcome the world, the devil, and the flesh. I must make reparation for my sins, physically and spiritually. I must do many good works, give alms, do acts of faith, hope, and charity to be right with God. I must remember that my sin is a slap to Jesus. It is to nail him on the cross, to mock him, to turn my back to him, to murder him and to murder my soul at the same time. I must live in the presence of God, 
seeking his light through his word in the sacraments. What can I learn from scriptures? Wisdom 4 verse 12. Because of the fascination of evil overshadows the good and the frenzy of desire perverts the naive spirit. That's why I must resist at the first temptation. I must do something completely different to turn my attention away from temptation. Because the devil, with evil fabrications in dark fascinations, darkens the inside and hides the meaning of the deadly poison of transient delights. First of John chapter 3 verse 6 No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. I must leave the word of God very clearly and not justify myself. First of John chapter 3 verse 8 He who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The Son of God appeared to destroy the works of the devil. If I am in sin, I am with the devil, because scripture says so. Therefore, I must renounce sin and the works of Satan. Romans 6 verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. When I am in sin, my soul is dead to God. It only lives for Satan. Matthew 5 verse 37, all you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. We are not honest with ourselves. We hide in ambiguity and therefore we do not reach true conversion. Apocalypse 3 verse 16. So, because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. We cannot walk having one foot on the road and the other into the abyss. We cannot grasp God with one hand and the devil with the other. Either we are or we are not. Second of Timothy chapter 2 verse 22, flee from the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, the Lord tells us that there is a time for everything. We already had a time for sin. Second of Corinthians 6 2, now is the time of salvation. Sirach 21 2, flee from sin as from a snake, for if you approach sin, it will bite you. Its teeth are lion's teeth and can destroy human lives. Sirach 3, 26, a stubborn mind will fare badly at the end, and whoever loves danger will perish in it. John 8, verse 21, Jesus said to them again, I am going away, and you will look for me, and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. May God give us grace not to die in sin, because if we die in sin, we will be content. We will never see God. How to overcome the flesh? Romans 13 verse 14, Rather clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ, and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Do not feed, do not encourage passions. First of Corinthians 6 verse 18, Flee fornication, 2 Timothy 2, verse 22, flee from sexual immorality, Sirach 3.26, whoever loves danger will perish in it, Proverbs 22, verse 3, a prudent man sees danger and takes refuge, the simple keep going and pay the penalty. Armor against sin, Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 18, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with a breastplate of righteousness in place, 
and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all, pick up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish the flaming armors of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, give us a like, share it with your friends, who knows, you may save us all, and please leave your comments. God bless you.